Hey there, today I'm going to be taking a look at Black Ops 6 running on five different mini PCs. All of these are going to be ranging in terms of performance and price, so we could see if any point here, Black Ops 6 actually becomes a playable experience. So to start us off, we're going to be taking a look at the Trigkey Speed S5 mini PC with the Ryzen 5 5500U. So jumping into the actual game, here it is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR, but it's FSR 1, and it is FSR 1 at the performance preset. So we are giving this game everything possible it needs to try to get the best possible performance, and unfortunately, the 5500 you really cannot keep up. With 1% lows that fall below 30, and an FPS average that is equally disappointing, you're just not really going to be able to play the game on here. And it doesn't help the fact that Vega is stuck on the drivers from September, so there is no driver optimizations. And even if they did get the update, more than likely there was no optimization done specifically for Vega. So it really seems like the lower end of the stack for these Vega APUs is just not able to keep up, but of course that is a Zen 2 CPU, so what if we pair it with a Zen 3 CPU and a more powerful GPU? Well, we're going to be taking a look at the B-Link Sur 5 Max with the Ryzen 7 5800H. This is about as good as it gets on the Vega side of APUs. We're talking 8 Zen 3 cores, 8 Vega cores, and a TDP of 54 watts. And in this most ideal configuration for Vega, it's surprisingly decent at the exact same graphics settings, which are the absolute lowest that you can realistically set them to. The performance here is noticeably better than the 5500U, to the point where while I wouldn't recommend playing multiplayer like this, playing through the campaign or playing through zombies might actually be a pretty decent experience. More than anything, this impressed me considering that we don't have driver optimizations for Vega here. So it really seems like Vega has some life left in it there, but it is really in the most ideal scenarios and anything below that is just going to be a bad experience. That being said though, there is an alternative because we are finally starting to see systems with the Ryzen 5 6600H start to hit some price points that make them really, really competitive, especially considering that even though they have a very cut down IGP you, the fact that it's RDNA 2 means that it is getting driver updates. So let's take a look at what this Firebat system is actually able to do. I think Black Ops 6 is one of those games that really emphasizes the difference between Vega and RDNA 2 at this point when it comes to these iGPUs, because we see a pretty substantial increase in terms of performance with this iGPU, and really the surprising part here is the fact that it is so extremely cut down. It's only 6 cores, while its bigger brother is 12 cores, but 6 RDNA 2 cores seems to be able to beat out 8 Vega cores in this title by a pretty noticeable margin and honestly it is making systems with the 6600H seem like a far better deal especially since they're starting to reach price points where they're even cheaper than some 5800H systems which blows my mind. And moving on to that chip's older brother, we're taking a look at the Ryzen 9 6950H running on the GMK Tech M7 Pro. And what really impressed me was the result that we ended up getting out of this system, especially since it ended up being an even bigger shock when I took a look at the system after that, but let's actually look at how it did in the game. This one was one of the biggest surprises to me because it really seems like in a lot of titles you can see a pretty noticeable gap between the 780M and the 680M, but this is a title that really just made the 680M flex its muscles and show that it's still a very powerful chip. And that's pretty significant because systems with this chip and all the variants of it are starting to reach some price points that are ridiculously low. 
but it really didn't become ultra impressive to me until I took a look at the next system. And the next system that we're taking a look at is pretty much my all time favorite mini PC. That is the UM780 XTX from Mini's Forum. Since the moment that I got it, it has been my favorite mini PC and I've had it for pretty much over a year at this point. The design is just absolutely gorgeous. Mini's Forum was really ahead of the game in terms of the IO layout and the inclusion of an Oculink port on a system a whole year before everyone else started to throw that onto their mini PCs. And just in general, being a very powerful machine, it is my all time favorite mini PC, especially considering just how great of a value it is in 2024. But the results in Black Ops were very surprising. See, what ended up happening is that after multiple runs, and I mean multiple runs because I really needed to verify this, this system actually ended up scoring consistently lower, and I really can't figure out why. It's not a TDP issue, I mean, the 7840HS is reaching a TDP all the way up to 70, while the M7 Pro is just not really even and getting close to that but i'm telling you after 20 different runs this has consistently been a thing now most of the time the gap is really not all that great usually just be a few frames in the one percent lows and the fps average but it is almost always in favor of the m7 pro so i don't really know what to make of that that was honestly the biggest surprise to me in all of this testing i'll have to take a look at another system with the 7840hs maybe even one with the 79 40h has to see if there's any difference there but this was a pretty interesting result here that i'm definitely gonna have to try to verify more but overall it really seems like if you want to have a decent experience playing black ops 6 you're gonna want some kind of rdna mini pc whether it's a 6600h on the cheaper end or going all the way up to a 780m equipped mini pc no doubt a mini pc with the 890m would do a really great job but those mini pcs are just at such ridiculously high prices that i can't recommend them to anybody right now just get yourself a normal pc you'll have a so much better gaming experience that it just really doesn't make any sense to spend a thousand dollars or almost a thousand dollars on a mini pc that doesn't have dedicated graphics but but if you're interested in picking up any of these mini PCs, check them out down below. I definitely recommend getting the UM780 XTX though. The iGPU and CPU are just so powerful for a mini PC. But the M7 Pro here is no slouch. It showed here that it is a very powerful system and at the price points that it's at, it's pretty darn competitive. So check them all out down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.